Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Two Point Hospital Strategy and Tactics Quick Tip. So today we are going to talk about probably one of the most useful but also, well, unpurposely hidden screens there are out there. And that is the Policies screen. Now, the Policies screen can be found here in the Finance Overview Policy. Yes, three mouse clicks to get to it, and the, the game generally doesn't draw your attention to it. So I'm drawing your attention to it. So what is the, the point of the screen? What do all these options do? Well, let's run through them. So first off, diagnosis threshold for treatment. Uh, as a doctor or as a patient is getting uh, diagnosed, um, you know, the, the, it, they start at, um, at 0% and they continuously go up as they go through different diagnostic phases and, and appointments. Now, how much they go up depends on the difficulty of their illness uh, and uh, also the skill of the, your doctors and the uh, uh, level of your equipment um, as they're going through and diagnose. Higher uh, difficulty illnesses will cause more uh, diagnosis diagnostics to be needed before you can get to a high enough cure rate or a diagnostic rate. At the end of the day, the, the patient does eventually need to be sent to treatment, but the chance of, uh, of their getting a successful treatment is dependent on how well diagnosed they are, with the ideal being 100%. However, sometimes it's just a little bit too much of a pain in the butt. If somebody's at 97% diagnosis, do you really want to send them to one more diagnosis room? Not really. So this is kind of uh, allows you to basically tell your doctors when to fudge it. You know, once they are above at or above this level, send them for treatment. Um, now, as far as what level should you use, you can go all the way down from 50%, not recommended, uh, or up to 100. Um, and there is no golden number. What really matters with this is how busy is your diagnostics um, in, in general. At the very beginning of the game, it's actually not a bad idea to set it to 100% and just make sure everyone gets fully diagnosed. Um, but as you get more and more patients, uh, especially if your diagnosis uh, is starting to lag behind, you may want to dip it down. Um, I personally like to sit it, sit it at, have sort of like a trichotomy, where I do a 70% if I'm getting swamped, 85% as just sort of my cruising altitude, uh, or 100% at the very beginning of the game, or if I happen to have, you know, overbuilt and overexpanded uh, and have some breathing room to handle the extra diagnosis work. Q warning length. Uh, this will just t tells the game when to show when your um, uh, when a room is particularly large in Q. At what level does it show up saying, "Hey, this Q is this size. You might want to do something about that." Um, honestly, six is probably a pretty good setting. You can go higher, but I wouldn't because that can mask problems. Um, you actually might want to go lower if you want to be especially picky about keeping your cues short. Um, so I, it's more of a personal preference here. It doesn't actually have any physical in-game impact. It's just all a control of how the visual uh, acts. Now this one, this 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 right here, this actually wasn't in place when the game was originally released. They released it sometime after. And boy howdy is this an important one. This is probably the main reason I'm doing this entire video is for this right here. Fast track treatment decision. Check that off. It comes unchecked by default for some reason. Every level you start up, it's unchecked. So the first thing you do when you go to a level is you come here and you check that off. Why? So what this does is, let's say you have a patient, um, you know, they, they were sent to uh, the ward for more diagnosis. They're at 70%, um, and so they go to the ward and they get 30 more percent diagnosis. With this checked off, even though they're at 100% um, diagnosis, they still need to be sent back to the GP's office uh, for one last checkup before the GP sends them off to treatment. This, as soon as they finish a, a uh, diagnosis appointment, even if it's not with the GP, as long as their diagnosis appointment gets their diagnostics level up to or above whatever your diagnosis threshold is, then it sends them straight to treatment. That might seem like a little thing, but in, in practice, it is so important. It Without this, your GP's offices would get 
flooded, absolutely flooded. Half of your hospital would be GP's offices with this off. This was a much needed addition and I don't know why it's not on by default, but yeah, do that, do it. There's no tactical reason not to. Staff leave rooms when idle. I usually leave this one on, it's on by default. Essentially, if a staff member is inside a room that doesn't have a queue at all, you know, they're done with a patient, nobody waiting for it, and some other room needs them, they'll, they'll leave their room, and that's fine. Uh, if there is a queue, they'll stick around. They won't just abandon a busy queue, so that's fine. Staff training messages. So this will tell you um, when staff are experienced enough for a promotion. Uh, but, um, you know, staff can get experience up to a point, but as long as you haven't trained them, they can't go up another level. They, they can't gain a level when they still have an empty um, experience bubble. So you need to train them and fill that bubble with something. This basically notifies you that, hey, you got people that are not going to continue gaining levels until you um, give them some training. And I always give your, go, always give your staff training. Yes, when they go up levels, they become more expensive, but but the amount of things they gain plus the things that you train them in makes it all worth it. Trust me. Uh, trust me on that. Now, uh, as far as uh, promote staff automatically, this is more of a personal preference. When a staff reaches the next level and they can take a promotion, this will automatically promote them and give them the comparable pay raise to keep them content. Um, this can make it so that some, uh, some staff fly under the radar, like you might have a star surgeon that suddenly gets prom auto promoted, but you might've missed the message. Uh, and so you might not know, oh, I gotta train my surgeon. And then he goes a long time without any training and um, until this kicks in and he gets too much experience. So it's just a, a personal preference. I like to turn mine on. It's off by default. You can do it either way. Now there's one more um, hospital policy thing that you can toggle here that's actually not on the policy screen. That's on the staff screen. The break policy here. This will basically determine um, how many, what percentage of your doctors, nurses, um, mechanics, or and, uh, janitors, and uh, assistants can be on break at any given time, and when they take a break, how long is that break? Uh, the default is 50% or uh, in 20 days, and that's not bad. If you leave it there, uh, you have my blessing. That that seems to be a pretty sensible thing. If you want to, if if you're a little overstaffed. Uh, or have some some extra you know people kicking around, um, you, or if you're um, pursuing a staffe strategy, uh, see my video on staffes. You're gonna to want to bump this thing up to 25 days, which also equates to 75 percent off. Uh, I would not go any lower. That will not give them enough time to take their needed breaks. They will become unhappy. And when they're tired, their effectiveness is lower too. So it generally err on the side of caution here. Uh, so that, my friends, are all of the different policies at your disposal. So not a bad idea to come in at the beginning of any given level and set them the way you like them. Um, the only one that you really need to come back for to toggle one, uh, one way or another would be the diagnosis threshold based on the current state of your hospital. Um, so I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, uh, please share it with a friend. If you have anyone who's getting, uh, having a little trouble or struggling with the game, point out my videos. I'm happy to help. Um, and, uh, let me know if there's any other topics that I have not yet covered that you want covered. Uh, so, um, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya.